everyone. Um, I will talk about package compiler, which is a package I started writing quite a while ago. Uh, what is package compiler? So it's a relatively simple package that helps you create a system image in which you um, insert your precompile statements. So mainly it offers a nice API to just say, I want these packages and I want to compile them into a system image so that I don't have any compilation time overhead anymore. So it's like ahead of time compiling your packages. Um, you can also use it to create a shared library like that out of your Julia script or create executables. Um, we at Next Journal use it to create quite a few Julia images that are pre-compiled without compilation time overhead. You can find them under this URL. So it's like for flux, flux and for some data science for query.jl, I think we have an image and for plots. And you can just remix those and get started with almost no compilation overhead. Um, what's the history? So it basically started by me refactoring um, a script from Jameson into something more like a package and I added snooping on top of it which Tim Holy implemented the snooping but I brought it like together. S um, snooping is the process of going through your program and see what functions get called to then actually ahead of time compile those functions. Um, yeah, Luca and Nathan did a lot of work for some time and made a lot of PRs and improved stability, especially for the executable generation. And yeah, it has in total 23 contributors. So quite a lot has happened. So what's the state of it? Um, it was never my favorite package, to be honest. I just wanted to have it. <laughs> So I was just like, okay, I sit down this evening and I get done with it. <laughs> and it was never enough and it was ever, all the time I was like, ah oh, shit, I'm not done and tests don't pass and I just leave it at this. Um, right now my main use case is kind of satisfied to compile system images from a package. So I'm even less motivated by now. <laughs> I have this infamous SD um branch that is quite stable and fixed a lot of issues, but it also broke quite a few things, so I've never merged it actually. <laughs> um, and I'm a bit out of motivation to fix all these corner cases that I had there. So it's still in a branch, it works. I use it for next journal all the time to um, ahead of time compile packages to make Docker images that just work. Um, yeah, but it's not, so like the commercial part is kind of done and uh, the rest would be in my free time, so I'm not too motivated to work on that. But, um, it's, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> it's a pretty simple package at its core, so I, I want to walk you through <laughs> <laughs> what it actually does. Um, um, so if you want to get this little script here into your system image because you really care about this test function to be compiled ahead of time or you just want it all the time loaded whenever you start Julia, then it's actually a very simple process to compile a new system image out of it. So it's pretty much just this one Julia command that outputs this um, sys.h from your pre-compile um, file, and then you just need to link it to your system image. So that's at its core, that's everything package compiler does. Um, all around it is just trying to get integrated into the package system and like automatically find all dependencies of your package, snoop your packages automatically from the run test file, for example, so that you can actually get all the signatures to um, ahead of time compile. And then there's the whole thing about like um, linking those libraries and stuff like that. Um, but that's the basic of it. Um, you don't need much more than that. You 
even the snooping is really simple. It's in uh, Julia base now. Um, it's just a command line flag. And if you run any Julia script with this trace compile pointing to a file, it will just record all pre-compiled statements that, um, that you called in your code. So if you look at this, that's what this will create. Um, and that already points to a basic problem I was fighting with. I was never sure if that's actually complete. <laughs> because, or like, if that's enough um, to actually exhaustively compile everything. So that needs quite a bit of debugging, I think. So people should write little pieces of code and then see if actually all the functions are in there that get called and if actually the compilation overhead is eliminated because there are some issues that point towards that it's not the case so that we are like missing um, functions, function signatures. It's not really sure if, it's, if, if we are missing these pre-compile statements or if the system image generated out of these pre-compile statements is just like not doing the, its job. So that, that needs quite a bit of debugging and if you look back here, this process took 150 seconds. So it's even at its most minimal um, basic setup, um, it takes quite a while to figure something out. So it's a very slow iteration to debug these kind of things, which got very annoying. Um, so it's just something we need to go through this. So yeah, I had to reverse engineer basically a lot of this. <laughs> um, and then the question is what to snoop? Right now, I, if you just started with a package, I snoop the run test, which should be a good starting point because, of course, it has a very good coverage of your code base. <laughs> um, but it usually also does way too much, right? Like sometimes there's just a loop going a lot of times with different data sh through stuff, but probably just calls the same um, um, call graph. So that's not interesting for snooping. But on the other hand, it's also very um, yeah, a lot of work to generate your own snoop file where you just call every function in your API. <laughs> um, I mean, that's kind of what the run test should do, but maybe we can write a little script to clean up a run test file to just call the most basic functions of it. I don't know. Um, then package dependencies are a problem, especially because we have like run test dependencies and then we need to merge them. And then the question is like now nowadays dependencies are not installed in your default environment anymore. You can't just use them. So do you just install them for the user? Because for some packages that might be like a hundred packages suddenly. <laughs> like if you say pre-compile uh, compile Marky, for example, it has like a hundred dependencies with the run tests. And do you just want them all installed? Or do you want a new environment in which it's all installed? Or, but then your system image, suddenly you have like um, this environment in your system image compiled into that. Do you really want that? So there are a lot of questions around that. Um, yeah, and then the whole question of projects and switching between projects. So I think David wrote, a, David Anthoff um, wrote a, um, plug-in for Visual Studio, which works based on the TOML um, on your project file, and he just told me if if you already created a system image for that project TOML that is newer than the project TOML, then um, Visual Studio will just use that, which seems like a nice idea to um, have a pre-compiled system image for it, but yeah, it still has problems because, I mean, first of all, it takes couple of minutes to compile it actually and then you might update it very quickly depending on your workflow. Um, yes, and then the, there's this whole setup and um, that's basically what was mostly re reverse engineered what's needed to actually set it up because while you're running this, um, um, while you're running Julia with this output O flag where you actually get the binary output, it, um, it, Julia is not fully initialized, so code behaves differently. If you're having using statements in there, the init function won't actually be called, which made some 
C dependency sec fault because, for example, in GR, the, uh, um, there's some initialization happening that needs to happen before you call any pre uh, compilation on it. I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how it actually interacted, but you needed to call the init function. Um, so there's quite a bit of nasty code around it to actually get a pre-compile, um, a lot of pre-compile statements into your system image. So, final remarks. Ah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, if anyone wants to um, rewrite package compiler or extend it, I mean, you could also like get into it. Um, please open issues and ask around because there's quite a lot of non-trivial knowledge in there where when I'm looking at it, I'm saying, I'm like, what? Why is this in there? That, that's bullshit. I just get rid of it. I actually did that a couple of times to my own code in package compiler and it wasn't good. <laughs> 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 so a lot of these things in there are actually not obvious, but um, they are needed to make it work. And yeah. Um, I'm willing to review stuff and look at issues, but I'm, I'm not really willing anymore to fix tests and stuff like that. <laughs> All right, yeah, and try out David Enhoff's plugin. It seems to be a nice idea about it. Uses package compiler, actually. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but um, it seems to work nicely. All right. <laughs> And I'm actually sharing this, so the slides will be online <laughs> already. <laughs> uh, I, I, so first of all, thanks for doing this because this is uh, an awesome package. Uh, I also just, I think, want to emphasize what you just said. It would be awesome if someone else picked up uh, the torch here and uh, ran with that. Not just because uh, in Visual Studio, the extension, we now essentially have the code to use custom system images, and it would be great if it was more reliable to create them. But with another application, and that's um, Jupyter uh, Binder, uh, where we're just itching to uh, add uh, sysimage uh, uh, support into the normal infrastructure. And I think if we had a version of package compiler that was more stable and reliable, then it would be actually really almost trivial to add that to, to that infrastructure. So I think the, the users are sort of lined up for this if, if someone wants to have a really uh, high impact on, on the community here. That would be a great project. Yeah. <laughs> All right, no other questions? So I guess we're all free to go to dinner.